Hi, it's Chris Watkin here, and I'm with Neil and Matt Boldock from Charles David Casson, who are an estate agents and letting agents in Chelmsford. Uh, thank you for joining me today, boys. Um, the question I want to ask you both is, why aren't many agents doing lettings in the self-employed model? Talk to me. Yeah, well, thanks for having us, uh, Chris. Good to see you. And see um, you. yeah, I mean, for us, we've always been quite surprised actually about the lack of um, focus on lettings in the self-employed models that we've seen out there. Um, and I think some of the models are focused on sales because it's bigger chunks of money and perhaps they come through quicker. But our view has always been, and within our own business, we've built it that way, that multiple streams of income are a wise move. Um, and also, that obviously, the lettings, whilst it is a more slower burner in terms of building the business, it gives you that recurring revenue over it, time. It's not glamorous either, is it? It's, it's, it's not an easy sell. It's not sexy, because you've got to almost wait for the landlord to, you know, when you get a sale, you can get the listing, but with a landlord, it takes longer to get, but once you get them, you've got the recurring income, yeah. haven't you? But I think a lot of agents, maybe that look at this one, and also agents that are now starting to recruit for this model, started as sales agents. So I certainly, in my career, was a sales only agent, had a very dim view of, of lettings, because when you're looking at it from the other side, you believe it's just fixing washing machines and boilers and a lot of aggro. Um, it's only when you're a business owner, you realise the true value of it. Um, mm. And I think, yeah, there's a lot of people that have started these um, propositions for people, A, don't have a background in lettings, and think it's going to be a real hassle to set up. Plus, actually, if we can just start taking chunks of sales income, it's quicker money for us as well. Yeah, because let's be honest, the, the, the model, the self-employed model, works on the basis that that as as, as from the you know from the um, person running the show, not 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 the associates or whatever you call them, the money you have to spend up front will be rewarded later down the line. So, you know, do, do, does your model? Because I know, as I said, I don't want a sales piece here, but does your model also allow agents to do sales as well then? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So our model, um, we counted. We've got twelve income streams, but mainly sales and lettings. You know, but we, and we're not saying we're so not as You know, we we offer the chance for seventy to ninety percent income. Sorry, commission for the agent, which isn't extraordinary out there. There's other you know opposition doing that, but it's the letting side that we're really kind of pushing. Um, because we think that's where the real value is long term. Do you think that an awful lot of the, you know, the the EXPs and the Keller Williams of this world don't do lettings because there, there is, you know, you're when you're a self-employed agent, you're a one man or one woman band, and and running a letting agency is quite intensive in terms of the support background. I mean, d does your model allow for support in the background for the lettings? He insists on it. And insist on it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're providing the full back office support because we feel that's important. One, to enable the agent to go out and focus on what they want to do, winning the landlord, letting the properties and doing the more sexy stuff. Um, and two, from a compliance point of view, because there's so much legislation out there in the lettings world now, as we know. So there's an opportunity here for agents, probably estate agents, who don't want to get involved with the day-to-day -day running of lettings because it's bullet, uh, dull and boring and minutiae, I can't be doing with detail, but they're very good at converting the business. This could be an opportunity for them to allow uh, them to attract the landlords, the sexy part which they're good at, but once they've actually got the tenant, they've got the property, they give it to you guys at head office to sort it all out. Yeah, we want our agents to do the fun bit. You know, um, throughout my career, I was a lister and a valuer. Um, and that's, you know, there are agents out there you can go and list them. If you can do a sales listing and sale, you can do a lettings listing and, 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 and mm. let on the whole. Obviously, you know, we, we provide training because you need a, a broader knowledge. But when it comes to the back of the, ultimately, at the point you agree the let, everything gets handed over to us and our team run everything from there. And what sort of percentage do you take for that? So we're taking 5% as a management fee. Okay. So the agent then gets whatever they charge over that 5%. So normal current rates at the moment is 10, 11%. So they're getting 5% for basically finding a landlord. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a drip, drip, drip. Um, we also ring fence um, their portfolio. And if they want to exit the market, that's theirs to sell. Really? Yeah. We, we, we firmly believe we're actually helping build, people build a business. Yeah. So that's quite nice to hear that you're not going to like, um, a lot of the corporates, and again, you know, your Martin and Co's and your Belvoirs, um, they have a franchise model. And the problem is, is that once you take them out, once you put them into the sweetie wrapper of, of that franchise, mm -hmm. you can't take them out. With this, they can. So really, 
Is that right? Yeah, I mean, we we want first refusal. So if somebody wants to exit the business, we would like first refusal on buying it. Um, and that will be written into the agreement to start with. Um, but if, if we can't agree or we don't want to buy that portfolio, then yes, they would be free to take their clients and sell it on elsewhere. I mean, interestingly, um, uh, something that I talk to an awful lot of people in the self-employed agency model is the that when you get going, you know, you're, you're going to help agents start self-employed estate agents, but the real challenge for you lot and the EXPs and the Keller Williams is, is when they do get going, what are you going to do to keep people? Because, you know, especially with sales, if you're completing and exchanging on 30 grand a month and writing a check back to 10 grand to Keller, I'm just using that as an example, that, that's quite a big check to pay for, mm -hmm. isn't it? What, what do you think... What do you think all the bosses of all the self-employed models should be doing in the future to retain your, your people? Well, it's just about providing value, isn't it? It's, it's the same really with anything. It's even if you've got people that you employ, um, you know, I'm not naive that anybody that works for me at the moment can't go and find another job somewhere. Um, it's our job to treat them well enough, you know, that they want to stay and, and, and that they can progress their career the way they want to go. And that's the same, we think, in, in the self-employed world. But really, I don't think it should be self-employed. I think it should be business owner. Well, we're going to talk about that in another video, sure. so, um, so that's good. Is there anything else that you would want to say to anyone who's, and again, I must stress that no one's, these guys are not paying uh, for, for this video. You know I'm hugely into the self-employed model and that I want to talk to people who are involved with it, and that's why Neil and Matt are here today. So you're not, can you confirm you're not being you've not paid me anything? No, to no, 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 we can't no. afford you. <laughs> yeah, we can't afford your records, yeah. <laughs> What advice would you give to people considering the self-employed model? Because I'm of the opinion that 80% of people aren't good enough or don't have the right mindset. What would you say to that? Uh, yeah, I, I agree, but I also don't think you should be embarrassed or ashamed if it's not for you. I do think at the minute out there, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of pushing it, and actually, people, employment is a very reasonable option for some people. Um, and even if it's not for you today, it's down you know for you later down the line. Yeah. Um, I think it's all about. It's not necessary just because you're a good lister doesn't mean that this is good for you. If you're great at listing, but you need to be fed the leads all the time, this might not be the model for you. Because when you go into your own business ownership, you've got to be the chief cook and bottle washer, and we'll provide a lot of support and and techniques and lead generation tools that work for us, as to do the other models, but you've got to be a go-getter. So, you know, it, it may be that you're really good at your job in the state agency, uh, but you're just that, and that's where you should be. It might be. You might be a good converter of free bowels, but you. But if you, you also, if you're going to be doing the self-employed model, you've also got to be a person that can go and get the free bowels, exactly, and also be a personal agent to actually then do the viewings and the offers yeah. and the negotiating. And and you've also got to have a bit of a thicker skin. So as I said, you know, being a lister predominantly throughout my career, you take it personally when you lose a listing. Um, and I think when you're when it's your own business it hurts even more. So you've got to kind of get a thick skin quite quickly. What advice would you give to anyone on how to toughen yourself up before we go? I'd say speak to people, speak to other people who have done it. How did, how, how did you toughen yourself up? Um, I, it's most things in life, you just have to keep going through it and eventually it hurts a little bit less. Um, you, you know, you just have to understand. Everybody fails. Show me anybody that hasn't, had, you know, had a failure. And and a lot of the time, you, you've you've got to go through it, and it, you lose a listing, and instantly you go, oh, they must have been cheaper than me. Oh, they must have overvalued it, and you blame something. Realistically, on the day for whatever reason, it, it didn't. You didn't kind of connect with that customer. And listen, once you lose a few, you learn your business hasn't closed, and then you win some, and you and you get the buzz again. We don't dwell on the losses, do we? No. Well, thank you for your time today, chaps, and I uh, will look forward to seeing you on another videos where we're going to be talking about the difference between self-employed and starting your own business and mental health in the state agency. So thank you for your time. Thanks, Chris. Thanks.